Welcome back. This is lesson seven of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session eight. And in this video, we'll talk about checkpointing. Checkpointing is a way of saving our model after each iteration or when certain conditions are met. For example, when the model achieves the best performance so far and what we were doing before in the previous video, when we were tuning the learning rate parameter, we noticed that the model oscillates. So perhaps it makes sense to save the model on the iteration number eight, but after training for 10 iterations, this is the model we get, which is a bit worse. Maybe this is one is 82 and this one is 82.5%. So this model um, is better. So it can identify some of the pictures more correctly than this one. But if we just train for 10 iterations and save the last model, this is what we will save and not this one. But ideally we want to save the model or perhaps this one. I think this one is slightly worse, but if it was like that and then it goes down, so we would like to save this one as well. And this is what we can do with checkpointing. The way checkpoint work, so let's say we train our model for 10 epochs. So first epoch, second, third, tenth. So when we train our model for one epoch, what we do, remember when we train our model at the end of each epoch, we evaluate the performance of the model on validation data set. And we do this after every epoch. So we train it for one epoch for 96 iterations. Then after that, after one epoch is over, we take the model we have and we apply it to validation. And we do this after each epoch. What we can do with this is after we apply our model to validation and see what are the numbers, we can invoke callback. So this is called callbacks. We can just, after the epoch is over, we can do callbacks and do anything we want. Evaluating on validation is also some sort of a callback. And then the history we get with all this information, I think it is also implemented via the callback, but we can add more things using this mechanism. This is something, some code we invoke after each epoch finishes. In Keras, callbacks live in a model called callbacks, and there is a bunch of them. Like the, the interesting one for us is model checkpoint and it gets multiple arguments. So the first argument is the name of the file. So let's say for us, it's model version one, and then we can write the number of epochs. It's epoch, and then the format is, uh... so let me type it first, and then I'll explain what's going on. So this is the format we will use for uh, saving the models. Even, even before that, so we have this model object, right? And we can save it using this save weights. And then we just give some name, model E1, H5. And then we can specify that the format is uh, H5. This is just a binary format for saving Keras models. And when we invoke this model checkpoint callback, it will save a model using this template. So this is the template we have. It has two things, epoch and validation accuracy. And this is a Python way of formatting. So there is this percent sign for formatting, but also there is format function. But these are two different ways. And Keras uses for model checkpoint, it uses this dot format notation. So it passes two arguments here. So first is the number of epoch, which let's say could be three, and then validation accuracy. 84%. And this is how the file name will look like. So 0.2D means this is a digit and they want to have a leading zero. So that's why it's 0 0.3. And uh, let's say we have 12, then it's just 12 without zero. If we have 0 3D, then it will add a leading zero here. And then validation accuracy. So this notation means that we only want to show the three decimal digits. So let's say we want it to have four, five, then this is how we would do this. But we want to only have three. So usually it's just some long number like that. And we're only interested in the first three digits because the rest are not really significant for us. So Keras will use this template for saving files. Let me remove that. And then the next parameter we have is save best only. So let's say we have our performance, for example, accuracy. And on our X axis, we have epoch. First epoch, second, third, and so on. 
Then after each epoch, we evaluate so this is a validation accuracy. So after each epoch, we evaluate our model. And let's say for this one, it's 75%. And after this, after one epoch, say it's 75%, it means that this is the best accuracy so far. And if during the second iteration it's less, then we don't care about this. We only care about the results if it's more. So let's say for second, it will be 80%. 80 is actually better than 75. So then, then now 80 becomes the best one. So we actually save this one after the first iteration. So then 80% is improvement. So we save it. And let's say if the next one is 79, then it's less than the previous best one, then don't save it. So we only save it if it's above the best one. And then if let's say for epoch four, it's better, and then it becomes the next best one. We only save the best one. So this one, for example, if it's here, then everything that is worse than that, we don't care. And this is what we mean by save best only. And I usually use that. I don't want to save it after each iteration. So if it's false, then we save after each epoch. But if it's true, then we save it only when it's improvement. So save best only is true. And then we need to specify what kind of metric we actually monitor. So for us, it's validation accuracy. And then the last thing we want to specify here is mode. So mode for us is max because we want to maximize accuracy. So we want accuracy to be as high as possible. But if it was a loss, let's say a root mean squared error, it goes down. So then we would be interested in minimizing here. Uh, the mode is max, we want to maximize and let's call this checkpoint. So this callback is checkpoint. Let me take the code for training. So the learning rate, the best one is this one. So I'll use that. Then for the model, we have one more parameter. So we have this callback checkpoint. Now we want to use it. And then there is parameter called callbacks. It actually gets a list of callbacks. We have only one callback checkpoint. We can just pass it. So what we do here is we make our model with the best learning rate, and then we use the same code for training the model, except we add a callback here. Let's execute this. So now it started training. So far, it hasn't created any. So this is the previous model we had. And so now it evaluated the model at 78%. You see it created. So. This is epoch 01, and this is the accuracy on that epoch. Now the second epoch, actually it's slightly better, and then the third one is even better. So let me refresh it. Yeah, we see that we have the second one and the third one, and each time it's slightly better. So the fourth one was again better. It should also appear there. And this one is again better. I'm waiting for a case when uh, it is not better. So far, it has only been improving, which is a good sign, I guess. Again, improvement. So we have quite a few files here already. For each of the epoch, we have a file. OK, so now this one is actually worse. So it's not an improvement over this one. It's um, half percent less. And we see that the seventh iteration, seventh epoch is not saved, only the sixth one, because the sixth one was the best one so far. And the one after that, epoch number eight, is also not an improvement. Then again, like it even declines a bit. And this one is reasonably good, but it's still worse than this one. So for this one, we also haven't saved anything. So it was improving up to epoch number six and then seventh and afterwards it wasn't improving. So that's why we didn't save it. And from this, I can delete all of this because we don't need them and we can just keep the best one. And yeah, I'm not sure if we need this one as well, so I can just delete it. So. 
this is the best model we have so far with the learning rate we tuned so it achieves the accuracy of 83.6 percent so this is our best model so far so we had this v1 in the parameter so this is a version one and what we will do in the next lesson is we will increment the version so we'll have v2 and we will do this by adding more layers now we have only one dense layer let's add another one and see if it helps or not